Good morning. A very wonderful good morning to you. I'm Cynthia Hoven. This is your with me online, in which we work on giving you the tools for how to do your with me as a personal practice and enter this extraordinary journey that has been gifted to us through the work of Rudolf Steiner. This winter, we're going to be working with the constellations and the consonants as formative forces that have created the world and created our bodies. And this is a rich and complex journey. We have to learn 12 different constellation gestures, zodiac gestures, as we go forth. I know that some of you have done this study with me before, not all of you. There will be quite a few who haven't. And I want to welcome all of you to come and do this with you, with us. And I want you to know that in addition to this morning class, when we're doing the Eurythmy, where I'm also doing the Thursday evening class in which I will be speaking at length about the different aspects of the Eurythmy, of the consonants and constellations. And so these classes are essentially paired together. And if you can, you should watch both of them so that through the Eurythmy, we create a living practice, a living relationship to the plant, to the constellations. And in the evening, we go into more of the spiritual understanding of what they are and how they work in our world. Today, however, on our first day, I'm going to take a few extra moments to lay the groundwork for what we're doing. So we'll begin moving in about five, 10 minutes, but I'd like to speak a little bit to open the space here. My core work as a teacher of anthroposophy and a teacher of Eurythmy centers in this season of my life and the season of world evolution about the question of what it means to be a human being of our time in which materialism is growing so powerfully, so strongly, and we are surrounded in our thought forms as well as in our manner of being with the forces of machines, mechanism, and death. And the doorway to spiritual work and spiritual insight is right open to us and right available to us. And if we look into, the, into our spiritual work, we can do so much now. But if we don't, the choices for us and for humanity are really imprisoning the human spirit. So what is our service? Ancient mythologies have long said that the world was created out of the word. The word spoke the world into being. And this, this characterization is found not only in the Bible, but in many different mythologies. And everywhere we look and move and walk through the world, we're living in the word. And indeed, in our own selves, we have a word nature. And as a Eurythmist, this is our special love to understand the word nature, because a big part of Eurythmy is learning to move word. And if we can understand the importance of finding word, we'll find that Eurythmy opens a huge door to us for spiritual understanding. We can say that in the mind and the experience of a Eurythmist, the world is a frozen word. The world is a frozen word. So what does that mean? Let's consider what we do when we speak. Word comes out of ourself if we have something to convey. And we use the gift of our mouth, of our language, our exhaled air, and the warmth of our heart to create and sculpt a word and put it 
into space so it travels to another person. And that person who receives it receives what we receive sounds, unpacks the sounds in their soul, and they feel either the warmth or love of the speaker. They unpack it further, and out of the sounds, they understand a thought. And if they go further through that thought, they experience the being who has spoken those words, who has put that thought into space and conveyed it. Can we please try to expand that picture to the picture that the whole world was created out of word? And in this mythology, the great world creator created beings and created all together. They listen to the thoughts, the intentions of creator God and sent their blessings, their power, their intentions into the world. They didn't have larynxes. This first world word is not audible, but just as we imprint thoughts, warm and movements when we speak, so too the world creators created the warmth and the medium and the movement and sent intentions flowing in all directions into space and time as they created it. And in the course of long ages of time, this movement that was set out came to rest. There are many stories to be told, but as it came to rest in our world, our physical world, it began to be congealed into rocks and trees and bushes and mountains. And as I walk through the world, I'm walking through an enchanted world, a frozen world come to rest. My body is also such a word. I walk through this world come to rest. And if I only see the things of the world as things, then my consciousness as, is as enchanted and sleeping and frozen as the world is. But a doorway opens up to us immediately when we learn to see the frozen things of the world in movement, in life. We see the plants growing. We see all of the situation, the changes and metamorphoses around us. And when we acknowledge that and awaken our mind to it, the world begins to be a living place. And I hope you can see it's just a question of noticing, looking, looking for the world thoughts of the creator sleeping in the things of the world. But we can go deeper and we look behind these streaming life forms to know the thoughts that were and placed into the world to create these forms that are shaped. And if we go even deeper, we can aspire to perceive and meet the beings, the beings, many of them, and the original being who created the world has given this world into us for existence and allowed it to become a resting place for us. And we live in this world, and it is our work to know, do I seek to know the being of the world, or do I just live in the world, which was called since ancient times, the world of illusion? And it's critical for us, because if I just treat another person as a thing, it's as if I crucify them. And the same thing, if I just treat the world as Thing, I pass over the mystery of being. And so to take a next step into the study of the constellations, we can say that we originally come out of this realm of being and have contracted and contracted 
through these realms of beings where we were surrounded by gods and goddesses. And we came through the realm where the stars are far, far distant from us. And there we met the formative ideas. We came to the world of the planets. And there we learned the movements of the gods. And we come to the earth and we are born. We are born into this life. And every night we go back into that world and come back again in the morning. And every time we pass out of one lifetime, we go back even further into deep space, deep being, and then come back into this world of illusion, learning to individuate. So in the study of Eurythmy, what a gift we have because we study the different aspects of creation and they give us a lens for understanding the formative forces that come towards us. So we will learn in this class how to find the 12 different formative forces that have made the 12 parts of our body that rule 12 color natures, that rule different realms of thinking, different points of view, different morality. Well, we will learn about them in the evening lectures. And in Eurythmy, we will learn to experience them, which is the best door I know for opening the gates beyond just mere informations and diagrams into life. There's the story. So there's much to tell, many aspects that go through this. We're going to begin each session with a warm-up exercise. We will choose weight and light. We will do some breathing exercises. We will practice getting used to the living in space, living space. Then in this module series, I'm going to do a poem that I've done before, but from which all of us, whether we've done it before or this is the first time, can learn so much about being born in this world of matter and being released into the world of spirit. And this poem will be a through line for you through all the classes. And then... We'll take the next step and start working with different consonants, which we will then work on with the poem as we go forwards. And then we will learn the 12 gestures and how in the 12 gestures for the 12 zodiac signs, we have the archetype that has created each of the different consonants. So with that as a beginning, I invite you to find your space. I hope you are standing in a space in which you have enough room to move and that you're able to be distant enough from the computer screen that your primary sense is to hear how I describe this, check how I'm moving, but then feel yourself moving in your own space. I begin my movement. Stand quietly. Become aware of myself as a presence, as a being born out of word. Through my incarnation, I, you, connect heaven and earth through your body. Stars above, earth below. A few feet or meters of your body. Now we'll use as our first movement exercise, this movement that comes from old Rosicrucian traditions, a meditation on weight and light. So please focus your center here above your heart. Step to the right, step to the left. And feel, I'm connected to the earth. I am grounded. Put some nice power in your legs, but essentially through your intention, your will, and your mental image, you feel this body is made for the earth. And we feel this position as a triangle with the upper point above the heart. We let the arms loose. I'm just talking with my arms, but you let the arms also engage in gravity. And you feel this wonderful power. I am here. 
And into this, you feel deep loop in the lower part of your body, weight bears downward. And that's half of our reality. And the other half is that we are born out of stars and sun. And so the second movement is from here, the point below your solar plexus. We let our arms be lifted lightly into the light, not with firm, harsh intention like we have when we go into weight, but with joy. Try not to look up nor to stretch out of your middle section, but just feel light around your head, sparkly feeling happiness, and feel light streams upwards. And this is a yellow experience. Yellow from this point up through your arms. Rest. In a simple meditation, you can visualize this, but I hope you see how it comes so much more alive if you actually move it and create this will intention. Weight bears downwards. Experience that blue. Now let's add to it. Light streams upwards. And what do you need to do inwardly? To be doing two things at the same time, fully joyful light and powerful grounding. And release. And release. And again, weight bears downwards. Light streams upwards. In the middle, I hold the balance. and release, and release. And so the next, the culminating step is that we feel that the yellow light coming down and the blue light coming from here, they meet in the center. And where these two triangles overlap, we have a green diamond right here in the heart and solar plexus area. And so that will be our third Thing to create. So from the beginning again, weight bears downwards. Light streams upwards. Now feel where these two overlap. Feel a green diamond. Feel this as peaceful, able to know the extremities of light and weight but a place where your heart and soul can be at peace. In the middle, I hold the balance. And release, and release, and consider what that means for life. As you go through the excitements or the pain, always you know yourself, knowing grief and joy, but also always knowing that you're a spiritual being having these experiences. Again, weight bears downwards. I know the world. Light streams upwards. I find rejuvenation, understanding, inspiration. In the middle, I am an, an explorer. I travel through the world. I hold the balance. I make a place for God. And release. And release, and can you still hold this green place inside of you? And we use that then to begin our next warm up exercise expansion and contraction. Take your hands here to your heart, this place of deliberate peace, steady, wise energy. And we're going to expand from here, expand. Moving through space, moving through time, living not a mechanical movement, of course, a movement of life. Now feel yourself like a flower, open to sunlight. And remember, as we've done in many classes before, you're not just these 
straight at lines of your hands, you are open as a sphere in space. And now bring from all directions your energy back into your heart. And you feel again that essence, that core of you. And let that core reach out and find world, love to the world. And bring it in to yourself. Let your heart be nourished. And you can do this opening and closing symmetrically in all sides. It needn't just be up. Can also be wide. In fact, it's always the sphere that you're moving. We can even open into the earth and back. Open wide and back. You feel how this affects your lungs and your breathing. Open. And back. Thank you. And remember now, please, especially if you're new to the practice, but even if you've been doing it a long time, we're practicing moving etherically. This means your movements are as soft and as fluid as the movements of gentle water, movements of a plant, and you're moving a space that is bigger than your physical body. So as you unfold, you can feel your whole aura, the sphere of your aura is unfolding, unwrapping. And when you get out here to the side, notice you're going way beyond your fingertips, at least as big as your room, eventually we say as big as the stars. And then you come back in feeling your whole sphere, finding, looking for center again. You don't want to overextend. You want to move smoothly, but develop a feeling of your etheric body as you do this. And you'll notice as you do this, that you want to keep your eyes very quiet. You don't want to strain and look. You don't want to look at your fingertips. Or if you go up, you don't want to look up. Your eyes are quiet because your whole head is sensing space. And bring it back in. You feel you're working out of a different sense, a sense of movement and space, the sense of your etheric. All right. I told you we will work on a poem as a doorway to get into the consonants work, which definitely are coming. But we're going to work with a poem. And this is a poem, as I said, that I've done with you before. These are the words, into the depths of the earth, lead the paths that we tread, while from the heights of heaven, our star shines from afar. We stand on the earth, we are chained in matter, but we are free, for we go between darkness and light, and of darkness and light are we. And the path that we tread leads us on till we come once again to the light and ever descend we anew and ever return to the light. And I love this poem because of the meaning it tells, because it's such an accessible meditation, but also because it opens our experience of feeling space quite well. And then we'll put lots of consonant movements into the poem as we develop over these weeks. So to develop a, the first part of this poem, that's all we look at today, I want you to take a, a step or two or three steps forward away from your back wall, but have an equal number of space of steps in front of you. And you're going to be walking forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, and hopefully also right and left a few steps. And the place where you begin is the central point of your world. 
And can you see that as a metaphor for this green diamond? It's a metaphor for the center of your existence, for the light of your heart, for God's space inside you, this point where you stand. And from this, if we set this up as a spatial metaphor, behind you is the world of light, the world that you can't see during the daytime, the world of source, of mystery, of the unknown, of strength, of archetypes. And in front of you is the spatial representation of the world of the senses, what we can see and touch and grasp, what we interact with all day long. And every time we come back to stand here, we know that as a human being, we stand span between these polarities. We'll also walk to the right without looking, but feeling what's around me, practice spirit sensing, and we'll walk over to the left. What's over there? What is the sphere that I live in? All right. Let's begin this movement practice by moving a few steps forwards and then back. That's enliven this image by conceding that the front space is the space we live in all day long. When we're walking in nature and seeing beautiful things, when we're washing the dishes, when we're driving our cars, when we're sewing, when we're doing anything, we work with our front space, our visual space. And how lucky we are if we remember throughout the day that we have sources behind us as well. But in any case, we go there at night to that black backspace. So imagine something in front of you. Let's make a beautiful image. You're going for a walk. There's a wonderful place of flowers in front of you, fragrance and scent. Your heart longs to engage with this imagination, this mental image, take one or two, or I'll take three steps forward with enthusiasm using your fingertips. And in this case, I want you to use your eyes to see what you're imagining. Look, beautiful flowers, experience, exaggerate what it is to be in the sense world. Love the world of appearances. And now three steps back and Hold that memory in your heart. And now let God, your angel, say, yes, that was half of it, but the real spirits that made that are back here. Come back and have a look. Come back to source. And you go back and feel, oh, that's the other half. That's the origin of the sense world. And come back to your heart, that green place, if you will, of the middle. With the spiritual eye, the world of senses is dark. So as we go forward into the sense world, feel, I'm forgetting spirit, usually. Don't have to, but I do. But I love the world. Take it back. And I love the spirit. Bring it in, in the middle. I hold the balance. The world of the senses. Yes, we affirm it. Get back. The world of spirit, I affirm it. Bring it back. In the middle, I hold the balance. Let's try going to the right without looking. You have to do a little cross step to do that. Step to the right. What's there? And back to the middle. And to the left. And back to the middle. And if we wanted, we could do all the diagonals, but we won't do them. All right. Let's weave this into the words of the poem that I spoke before. So forward three steps. Into the depths of the earth. Now go back to your beginning place. Lead the paths that we tread. Now go back to spirit space. Wow, from the heights of heaven. And now you feel starlight behind you, God's light, and bring that back into yourself. 
our star shines from afar. To the right, three steps, cross your feet as you go. We stand on the earth. Go back to the left. Here you're going between front space and back space. Go to the left and go five steps all the way across the room. We are chained in matter. And back to the center. But we are free. And in the center, we find our free space. Now we'll go forwards where we go between darkness and all the way back. Light space, light and all darkness and light are we self knowledge. Here I am. Thank you. Let's do this a couple more times because this is something that I I offer to you to take with you as you build the pieces of your personal practice in the, the week that comes. Practice using this to be very alive in how you experience space. Think these words in your mind. You won't speak them, but you have you will memorize them. Into the depths of the earth, lead the paths that we tread. Now you remember the words are about your backspace. You won't speak it, but this is what you'll think. While from the heights of heaven, a star shines from afar. We stand on the earth. We are chained in matter, but we are free. For we go between darkness and light and of darkness and light. Are we? Again, we'll do it two more times. Create your intention to remember what it is to go into the world, to wake up in the morning, to be born into the depths of the earth. Lead the paths that we tread. While from the heights of heaven, what is it like to experience God's light? Our star shines from afar. Feel the whole sphere around you. We stand on the earth. We are chained in matter, but we are free. For we go between darkness. Now go all the way to the back and the light and of darkness and light are we. One more time. This was into the depths of the earth. Lead the path that we tread. Feel your back. I offer in the heights of heaven. You can't see with your physical eyes, but you can feel. To the side, we stand on the earth. You can't see, but you can feel. Awaken a new sense. Chained in matter. Go back to center. Feel heaven above, earth below, where we go between darkness, feel behind you, and light, and of darkness, and light, are we.
All right. Thank you. Now, if you have already done this with me in previous sessions, you can already start to weave the sounds into this, as we know, and um, I'll teach them as we go forward. So if you don't know, just practice getting used to the directions of space. Now, the reason I chose to do this is because as we get to know the constellations, we will create a practice of feeling the directions of space so that we can feel how the forces of the constellations come to us from a great circle, from the circle of stars, from the belt of constellations that surround the earth. And so I'd like to set that up with you right now. In this way, we're going to imagine we are here on the earth, earth beings, and all around are the seasons. On your right, imagine or think or enliven the picture of the burgeoning forces of sun of Easter like the forces of sunrise. On your left, your left, so don't just mirror me, feel your left if you can. Imagine the feelings of autumn or of nightfall. So we have light, rising forces, and sinking forces. And these in the zodiac are exemplified by the summer, or the spring equinox, or in this case, the forces of Aries and the forces of Libra. Rising spring forces, falling autumn forces. And between the two of them, we have the forces of summer behind us in the light and Winter before us, Capricorn before us in this space. And let's take a few steps backwards. This experience of light. Think of high summer. And in front of you, winter. Again, summer, feel your back. Feel as if you're just basking in sunlight on your back. Don't look up, but feel light. And coming forwards, winter. Come back to the center. Good. Now let's imagine this. Stand in the center, earthling over there, sunrise forces or light for spring forces. That would be Aries, and then headed back to Cancer, back there to midsummer. Aries, and behind that is Taurus, and behind that is Gemini, and behind that is Cancer. And then over here, we have in the height of summer, Leo, and then we'll have Virgo, and then we'll have Libra. And we're going down into the depths here in front of us, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries. I hope you can imagine that. Some of you, if you have a hard time visualizing, you might imagine or you might even physically get a hula hoop and put that hoop around you and kind of bend it so that you can see the high arc behind you of the summer signs and the low arc in front of you of the winter signs. Okay. Now, in your mind, place a pillar right here where you're standing. That's the center of your world. And scoot over here to the sunrise place. Your sunrise. And you're going to go. So you must be on the right side of your center on the computer screen, because of the mirroring effect, I'm on the left side of your screen, but you must be on the right side of your center. Yeah. Sunrise forces, the first sign, the sign of the origins, Aries. Go back 
and the sun is getting even higher, Taurus, even further back, Gemini, and then high summer back here. Okay. And let's continue now. Now we have three signs that are going to high summer into autumn. Leo, Virgo, Libra, opposite from Aries. And then we'll continue forward. We have Scorpio, and then we have Sagittarius, and even darker into the midwinter points of Christmas, new birth, and then the rising Aquarius, emerging out of darkness, Pisces, to the sunrise point, Aries. Let's try that again. Aries, rising, Taurus, rising, feel light behind you, create this imagination, Gemini, high summer sun, Cancer, and still radiant, but releasing some of the summer sun, Leo, Virgo, Libra. Now into the force of death, Scorpio, into the deeper, darker places, Sagittarius, Capricorn, midwinter, as dark as can be, and then rising signs with Aquarius, Pisces, the last one, and then the rising forms. Okay, should we do it again? Aries, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, and now into the dark times, Scorpio, more dark, Sagittarius, Capricorn, and then slowly emerging, Aquarius, Isis, Aries. Good. So this is something for you to practice as well. And now what we will be doing is working with the zodiacal sign for each one of them. It's to show you, to anticipate what this is going to be like. I will demonstrate for you what the signs as I go around the circle one time, but please be mindful. I'm doing them so quickly and without giving you any substance. So don't try to learn it from this. Take your, take some patience. We'll learn them all in the week to come. Okay. When I visit Aries, my practice is to do the sign of Aries. Horus. Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. And back to Aries. So that is just a small preview of what we'll be doing. But what you please will do is practice getting used to these 12 perspectives streaming at you after you've practiced getting used to space with this poem. And now let's take a next step because, as I said, each of the constellations is home to one of the consonants, whereas each of the planets is home to a vowel. The consonants being the outermost things create the more powerful forms, and the planets create the soul sensation, the feeling quality of the things of the world, of the soul. So let's play with the consonants now. And I want to choose a couple of them to start our journey. And I'd like to start by building up a, uh, by using this backwards and forwards experience that we've already developed. So if you please go back. 
into the space behind you and think of stars and light and source energy and bring that forward to you. Do that again, expanding into the back space. And bring that forward to you. One more time. Now I'll add another imagination to it. Go back into there and imagine spiritual beings, and in particular, your own personal uh, concierge, your own angel, is saying, come, my dear, let me wrap a cloak around you. And bring, take it with you when you go to Earth. Don't take it directly into your heart, but hold it as your body. Friends, have you understood the image here? Go back. And a host of beings represented by your own concierge, it's your own angel, says here, this is everything you're going to need to build a body for yourself. And so when you stand on the earth, you hold a body. This body is made out of stars, out of planets, out of elements and ethers. And you wrap it around yourself, and it's the shape of your aura, and all the way inside all of your inner organs, your bones, your whole space is this. Angels did not only make this wrapping for you, they also made it for things in the world. So your personal cloak was made from outside, but now let's watch as the angel creates things in the world in front of us. Let's go in and see a little seed. Wrap a little cloak around the seed. Another seed. The important thing for you right now is to experience, make an imagination of formative forces going around a midpoint. Formative forces headed towards the midpoint. Let's make a big bush. Let's make a bird in the air. Or a butterfly. Or a boulder. And I want you to see these are all archetypes of shaping sculptural forms. And these are the sound oh. because if you practice saying oh, your mouth, your lips make that movement. Oh. And these are the gifts of one particular constellation. So this is how things, these, the correspondences work. The constellation that has given us the sound B is the sound, the constellation Virgo, the constellation of the great mother goddess who has made all things out of the womb of worlds. So let's go a little deeper with this. We're standing here to get to know the sound B. Stand here and imagine, remember what it was like to go back into the starry space and grab your cloak. Reach back with your arms, pull that cloak around you and your angel behind you or the constellation of Virgo wraps you in your protective body sheaths. Gives you limits, gives you shapes, gives you form. Make it alive. Think of what we worked at the beginning of this class where I said, everything could be a dead experience or 
through our participation, we make it alive. Can you make this movement come alive? This movement is everywhere in nature. It has made the cats. It has made the bushes. It has made the trees. This movement. And it has made your body. And inside your body, it has made the organs, all the shapes, everything that is enclosed in a bundle has been made by B. A little bit more. Out of the rounding forces come from Virgo. And again, use your backspace, reach back there, come forward, and developing your rhythmic mind. As I stand here and create this sheet, I am feeling all of this. I am feeling myself. My whole aura, the walls of the room are responding to what this shape. The world comes alive through this practice. And again, I was born. Or looking back into deep time, Virgo created the idea of seeds to protect the flower species through the winter. Oh. 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 And made wonderful little bundles of cat fur oh. Oh. that you might hold. And has made birds that fly through the air, but they start out nesting. Oh. And so on. So now I'd like to show you the Eurythmy gesture for B, for the constellation Virgo. What we will work on is how all of these constellations live in our body in different places, from our head through to our feet. Each part of the body is connected to a different constellation. And the constellation which rules over, which Virgo rules over, is the constellation, is this area of the body, the metabolic organs, not directly the female organs, although there's a strong correspondence, because the mother organs, the female, are in this inner metabolic space. But essentially, it's that the whole cooking organism inside here, where food is digested and processed and turned into you eventually. So this is a female maternal Virgo space for all of us. Stand with your feet together. And the gesture is simple, but profound. You take your left hand, your woman hand, if you will, and hold it directly and softly against the hip bone itself. And you deepen yourself in that feeling, the feeling of inwardness, inner richness, miracles. And the world creator not only made us beings who would engage with the outer world, made us beings who can digest and process the things of the world inside us. This is sacred space. You stand here quietly, give thanks for this space. And then when we are doing a meditative practice on the consonants, I will create this gesture, and then I will create the sound B. feeling I am I have learned how Virgo speaks and then I will come back to this so we do the gesture and the sound and the gesture okay release we'll practice that again 
And then later we'll go through the whole circle in, in the weeks to come. But here, when you come to Virgo on your tra traverse, your journey through the zodiac circle, come to Virgo, you stand here. Gratitude and acknowledgement for these interior forces. My gaze is very soft when I do this. I don't shut my eyes, but I'm very inward. This is a very, in Eastern terminology, a very yin experience, inward. And now, whoa. Whoa, you pull your body to yourself. And now I want to contrast that with a very different experience, the experience of us as we take this created world into ourselves or take the stars into ourselves. I want to do the sound he with you. You try making it first. You find you don't need your lips as much as you need your teeth. And then the tongue has a quick little pop in there. Yeah. The formative force of the T is thin and abrupt and pointed and goal-directed. And to set it up with you for the first time, you're standing in the middle of your room. Let's take a few steps back towards the light-filled energy of summer. Go back and feel the earth and the air and the sky are filled with light and with this Leo energy, you bring it all into yourself. This is Leo energy. Leo has made our heart. So let's go back and feel the ground using your backspace. You can't, you're not using your eyes. You feel your arms in the widths of the world. You feel your spirit in the heights of the world. I have been made out of all this world, and I take it into me through my manifold senses. Again, I am fed by, nourished by the senses. And T comes from the heights of heaven, and the zodiac gesture for T is this. In contrast to what you just had learned with Virgo, which is inwardness, this is outer inflaming enthusiasm. Look at my hand. I have my hand all the way to the back, both hands like that. So feel. And this is a sign of Leo, as I said. And inwardly, there can always be, I'll, I'll always be a kind of subterranean a lion feeling, because it's all about the expanse of the heart into the world, the joyful, exuberant, enthusiastic experience. So let's try that. Leo. Oh, hands turn backwards, and you are so present. And now, in response, let's do the sound P. E. From the depths, to the widths, to the heights, and you bring them all into yourself with lion experience, um, enthusiasm, right into your crown. Now, there's a very special part of this T as a kind of after effect. Don't move your hand, I'll just move mine. This T will radiate right through your body and come right or right through your midline, right down into your feet. But it's as if you have different little cups or chalices that receive this energy. You might say that they're in front of the chakras, if you'd like to think in that way, but especially in the heart. And the heart is where the blood streams from above and below, right and left, all coalesce to make this wonderful feeling level of the heart, 
which has been created out of Leo energy, even as the inner organs have been created out of Virgo. Well, let's try that again. Leo, inwardly you feel that. Now take the world into yourself and feel this especially land in your heart, which kind of pops with joy. And then we do the sound, the zodiac sound again, Leo. And rest. All right. So that gives you a little bit to practice today. Let's review what we did. We stand before we begin the practice. We do weight and light. I like to do it three times. Then contraction, expansion. And then we move contraction, expansion a little bit into the front space and back space and develop that into the poem. Into the depths of the earth, lead the paths where we tread, while from the heights of heaven, our star shines from afar. We stand on the earth, we are chained in matter, but we are free, for we go between darkness and light, and of darkness and light are we. And then another part of the poem will do a spiral. And then from there, we use this experience of light and dark to go around the zodiac circle with the promise that we're going to be building that up in the course of these, this module series. And then we just tasted two of the sounds over here, Virgo and Leo. We'll do more in coming weeks. I hope that you as you work with these exercises on your own personal practice, you realize that working with the consonants is like a bath into your, the formative forces that made you your own living body. So there's a lot going on in the practice and it's not just memorizing things. It's like, hey, friends, I learned what Virgo is. Not that at all, but rather you're practicing moving in living space and thinking, living thoughts. We will close with that for today. And I will come forward and take any questions that you might have. And then again, I encourage you very much to come on the Thursday evenings. You'll need to re-register. It's not an automatic registration. So if you didn't register for that, you'll need to go back into the website and register. Thank you very much for your support. As is so clear, they are all my gift to the world because I would like everyone in the world to be able to harvest you with me. But on the other hand, in the spirit of two-way exchanges, if you want to enable this work to keep going and enable me to go to the dentist, no, <laughs> joke, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> pay the rent. Yeah, there could be a nice energy exchange. So I want to thank you for all of that.